ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಪಿಯೋ ನಮಃ ಐ ಆಮ್ ರುಕ್ಮಣಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪೊನ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾಶ್ರಮ್ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಎ ನ್ಯೂ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ರೀಡರ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಪ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ದ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಆಥರ್ ರಂಜಿತ್ ಲಾಲ್ If you tidy up the dish a bit no one need know you know smoothen it out and put some more silver paper on top maybe in a smaller dish it was not a suggestion that was welcomed and anyway wouldn't have worked because bambi had trotted off into the veranda to greet the visitor and let her know how delicious the rasmalai was luckily the lady was very fond of dogs herself and bambi was pardoned instantly where we slipped up big time was by feeding bambi at the table she was after all our very first dog and none of us could resist those pleading eyes gazing up at us like some half starved waif as we ate surely it could do no harm to give her a tidbit now and then especially of the more unplatable parts of your meal how could you eat with those eyes gazing at you like that and traveling from your plate to your hand to your mouth in the old days people used to put aside some of the food in their plates for birds and cows before they ate so this was really no different sometimes of course you were in a hurry late for college or school and what better and quicker way to dispose of a rubbery toast and so nearly all her life bambi would turn up at the dining table during meal times and sit and drool and whine and drool and whine and drool and whine as we tried to eat turn by turn she would go from person to person looking terribly matted if we refused to give her anything now slowly bambi moved out from that place to the veranda she went near the guest and as the lady was very fond of dogs Bambi was pardoned instantly. She had the strange habit of being fed in the dining table. Whenever the people in the family gathered in the dining table, she follows them. She always sits in the place nearby gazing at them and always drools and whines when they try to eat. She tries to get something from them to eat. If she doesn't get anything, she moves from one person to the other with a sad looking face it would become 10 times worse when we had guests knowing full well that she was not likely to get anything from the family she would sit down next to the guest look pathetically at him or her as if she had been starved for the last fortnight and start her routine oi oi if this doesn't work she would place a paw on the guest's thigh and continue whining bambi stop it behave yourself put your paw down at once do we behave like this when you have your food and then she would produce a final weapon drooling copiously she would put her dribbling chin on the poor guest's lap and look up sorrowfully laying down a large swath of silvery drool on the guest's clothes Oi you know these cruel people don't give me anything to eat i'm so hungry oi this habit becomes 10 times worse when she finds any guest at home she slowly moves to the place and sits near the guest and looks at them pathetically as if it starved for a long time if there is no response from the guest she moves close to them and places her paw on the guest and continues to whine then slowly she puts her dribbling chin on their thighs and drools on the clothes of the guest she shows that as if it has not been fed for a long time and feels so hungry bambi get your mug out of there you have drooled all over auntie's lovely sari 
Disgusting dog, really. So sorry. Here's a napkin, or would you like a towel? Damn dog, here, let me wipe it for you. And if there were more than one guest, she would of course try her luck with each of them. It was a mistake not repeated with the other two dogs and has taught me a golden rule. No feeding at the table ever. If she finds more than one guest, then she will try her luck with each of them. When Bambi grew up older, the people in the house brought two dogs and after all these incidents, they understood the mistakes and tried not to repeat this with the other two dogs which they brought home. Bambi here taught them a golden rule forever. That is, no feeding at the table. The story starts with a small pup brought into the family and was named as Bambi. Everything changed when Bambi came to the house as she was the first pup in the house. She was untrained and mischievous. So here the author describes in the story how much attention that is needed or required to take care of a pup. She was pampered by everybody and soon turned into a spoiled pup. She used to chew on shoes and slippers the legs of chairs and tables and even on books. She had to be carefully looked after lest she got into serious trouble with electric sockets and wires. On one occasion Bambi swallowed a large piece of a collar but she didn't feel any discomfort but the author was worried if it didn't come out, then Bambi has to undergo an operation. But Bambi tried to warm it and the swallowed piece came out. The author here says that Bambi stopped the habit of chewing when she grew up and she had the habit of stuffing her face while it was not required or wanted. So while in another instance, Bambi went near the fridge where the fridge door was left ajar by someone in the house. So it opened the fridge door wide enough and put her head inside and took the whole packet of butter from the fridge. The people in the house searched for the butter and they saw some pieces of the wrapper lying on the floor. So they also found Bambi looking very happy with a glint in her eyes. So people in the house were worried because she ate a half a kilo of butter and of course she was ill for the next few days but refused to learn her lesson. She repeated the same thing with a wok full of oil in which kebabs had been fried and she also found the waste paper basket to be an interesting place for her to play. So the next incident happened when Meena's mother-in-law-to-be was invited to tea. So mother prepared good variety of sumptuous dishes for them. She prepared sandwiches, cake and the magnificent bowl of rasmalai and she arranged everything perfectly in a trolley in the dining room. So the people went out to the veranda to serve the guest some tea and the mother after some time she just turned to the dining room to check whether what she has arranged was perfect. Bambi took advantage of the opportunity and gorged on the delicious white rasamalai. When Ranjit and Mala came to the dining room, they saw the dropping black muzzle with the white rasamalai dripping from under the cloth. But the luckiest thing was that she did not touch the cakes or sandwiches 
that were kept over there. Now slowly, Bambi moved out from that place to the veranda. She went near the guest and as the lady was very fond of dogs, Bambi was pardoned instantly. She had the strange habit of being fed in the dining table. Whenever the people in the family gathered in the dining table, she always follows them. She sits nearby, gazing at them, and always drools and whines when they try to eat. She tries to get something from them to eat. If she doesn't get anything, she moves from one person to the other with a sad looking face and finds out something to eat. This habit became ten times worse when she finds any guest at home. She slowly moves to the place and sits near the guest and looks at them pathetically as if it starved for a long time. If there is no response from the guest, then slowly she moves close to them and places her paw on the guest and continues to whine. Even if the people scold her, she will slowly put her dribbling chin on their thighs and drools on the clothes of the guest. So she shows that as if she has not been fed for a long time and feels hungry. If she finds more than one guest, then she will try her luck with each of them. So when Bambi grew up older, the people in the family brought two dogs and after all this incidents, they understood the mistakes and they tried not to repeat this with the other two dogs which they brought home. So Bambi here taught them a golden rule forever and that is no feeding at the table. Reaped the benefits means got the advantage of insatiable desire. It means a desire too great to be satisfied. Discomfited means in discomfort. Reaching means trying to vomit. Mania means a strong interest in something. Satiated with life here means happy with herself. Pukey means feeling like vomiting. Squatted resplendently. It means sat with a bright and beautiful appearance. Emanating means coming out of. Wreckage it means parts of something that has been spoiled. Trotted off means went off slowly on its four legs. Wave here neglected and abandoned animal. Limpid means deep and expressive. Terribly matted it means very sad. Copiously here in large quantities. So with this, we have come to the end of the session, children. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day, children.